Karrion Cross is back. He's confronted the bloodline and he's assaulted Drew McIntyre. The whole roster is on notice and we're back on SmackDown the week after and McIntyre is furious. He says, the fact of the matter is, I'm the number one contender and I'm not gonna let one of Triple H's boys stand in my way. Hell, I can't even believe I got jumped by a guy who used to wear a gimp mask to the ring. A guy who looked so stupid that not even his own wife would walk with him to that ring. McIntyre has no idea what's going on. He snaps to his right and he notices that Scarlet is standing there. She has a steely glare and she says, the end is near. Tick tock. The week after we see Karrion Cross in his first match since his return and he destroys his opponent. They don't even stand a chance and he has a very curious onlooker while he does it. After the match, McIntyre comes out right away. Scarlett chooses to get out of the way as well. She can see what's gonna happen. And with Roman watching on from backstage, the two bulls meet and it is chaos. They are throwing haymakers at each other left and right. McIntyre gets on top, lines him up and smashes him with a claymore. He looks down at Cross and he screams, I told you. You're not getting in my way. This is my house. Tick tock for you, Carrie. He then looks at the hard camera and he stares down the barrel and he says, and don't think I've forgotten about you, Roman. I know you're watching. It's tick tock for your ass too, big man. McIntyre is the clear number one contender and he has his shot at the title coming up at Clash at the Castle in Wales. And he is on the war path. He's in a match and he absolutely dismantles his opponent as well. Interestingly, during the match though, we see Scarlett watching from a distance. We haven't seen Karrion Cross at all. And you'd think he'd be right there to get another piece, but no. McIntyre looks over at her and says, Where's your man? Or is he in the dungeon with his gimp mask on waiting for you? Scarlett is unwavered. She just replies with the same response as before. The end is near. Then, instead of carrying cross, we get the Usos, and they take out McIntyre in a two-on-one assault. It's typical bloodline behavior. And then the tribal chief rolls out. He says, I'll see you in Wales, Drew. Welcome back to the island of relevancy. Enjoy your stay. It won't be a long one. Still, from a distance, Scarlet looks on. It's chilling and ominous. Something's brewing, big time. And it completely boils over the next week on the last SmackDown before Clash at the Castle. McIntyre and Reigns are closing the show and they were meant to be having a contract signing, but nothing gets signed. It's complete chaos again. The match is still official, but the question is, will either of them even make it to Wales? As they're throwing hands, both men are bloodied up. And again, Scarlet is watching from a distance. Where is Carrion? What are they plotting? What will happen when McIntyre and Reigns face off with the dark cloud of Carrion Cross over the top of them? We get all of that answered at Clash at the Castle. And McIntyre and Reigns are deep into the main event. McIntyre is in control. The UK crowd are absolutely behind him. They are ready to see him drop Reigns and end this historic title run. He's ready to hit the Claymore. He runs at Reigns, but Reigns evades and McIntyre nails the referee instead. And Reigns is poised. He looks for a spear on McIntyre, but he evades that. He gets distance and finally hits Reigns with the Claymore. There is no referee to make the count though. Then who should emerge? It's Scarlet again. And McIntyre is looking up the ramp at her. And she utters the words, the end is here. Cross has blindsided McIntyre. He chose this moment to strike. The claymore he received weeks ago, still at the forefront of his mind. He then turns his attention to Reigns. But before he can get to him, here come the Usos, and a fight breaks out at ringside, 
and they spill all the way out into the crowd. And while Cross is preoccupied with them, Reigns has fought back up to his feet. He stalks through. He lands a spear. But he knows there's no referee. He can't make the cover. So he locks in the guillotine to make sure of it. And McIntyre is out. The referee slowly recovers. He sees McIntyre unconscious and he calls for the bell. It's heartbreak for McIntyre in the UK. But then we see footage from backstage. Jay Uso is down. Jimmy Uso is down. And Rain sees this on the Tron. But who's of course standing in front of that Tron? It's Scarlet. And she utters those words again. The end is here. Cross is back. He's wiped out both Usos. And he stands over Reigns. And he says, Tick. Tock. Can you hear me? Can you see me now? The last time I was here, I wasn't heard. I wasn't felt. I wasn't taken seriously. This time, it's different. This time, I went right after the tribal chief. I went right after the Scottish psychopath. I went right to the top because that's where I belong. This is my place. This is my destiny. That championship that Roman holds is my destiny. So I ask again, can you hear me? Can you see me? Listen to the ticking of the hands of time because they're counting down. Doomsday is coming. Roman Reigns has assaulted Cross and they're fighting all over the car park. The fight is quickly ended though by Drew McIntyre who is pissed. He's furious and his big moment was ruined in Wales. He laces both men with claymores and he screams, I want both of you. I'm sick of this bullshit. You two are in my sights and it's over for both of you. After the show, there's a huge announcement on WWE's Twitter. It's announced that at Extreme Rules in Philadelphia, there will be a triple threat Extreme Rules match. But there is an even bigger twist coming and that is in the form of a massive stipulation. And Paul Heyman, who has just returned, finds out what that stipulation is the hard way. He's feverishly complaining to Adam Pearce the next week on SmackDown. He's saying how unfair the Tribal Chief is being treated. Just because people keep getting involved in his matches doesn't mean he should be punished. He has no control over who interjects. And Pearce cuts him off and says, oh, so he has no control over whether the Usos get involved or not? And Paul pauses and says, well, that's... That's different. And Pierce cuts him off again and says, that's what I thought, Paul. Also, I have some more news for you. This match has two falls. And the first fall is for the Universal Championship. And the second is for the WWE Championship. Heyman can't believe it. He storms off, but before he can get out of the room, Pierce says, oh, and there's one other thing, Paul. I like a bit of a spectacle. So next week, the Usos have a tag team match, and if they lose, they're banned from ringside. Paul can't believe it. He says, oh, against who? Pierce replies, against two men who have a real interest in them not being at ringside, Paul. Cross and McIntyre have been at each other's throats for weeks, and now they're teaming to try and rid the match of the Usos. Can they coexist? Of course not. Cross drops McIntyre during the match and walks out. He looks back and says, Do you think I care if they get involved? I dropped them all in Wales and I'll do it again in Philadelphia. Good luck even making it there. McIntyre inevitably loses the match and as Cross is walking away, he gets smashed by a spear by the tribal chief. Reigns takes a brief look at the downed Cross and then he makes a beeline for McIntyre as well. 
McIntyre has been beaten down two on one, but Reigns doesn't care. He spears him too. And he lets everyone know that he is still the head of the table. And he stands over a down McIntyre, flanked by the Usos. Is this gonna be the story in that enormous triple threat match at Extreme Rules? We have no reason to believe otherwise. Cross is down on the outside, and Reigns and McIntyre are trading in the ring. McIntyre is calling on everything he has, all of that rage inside, and he gets on top of Reigns. He gets that separation, and he lands the Claymore. This is it. This is where it ends for Reigns. No way. Not again. The Usos have gotten involved again, and Drew McIntyre this time snaps. He starts demolishing everyone. And he has them both down, and then he slides back in the ring. But he gets cut in half by a massive spear from Reigns, who's recovered. McIntyre is pinned. It's unbelievable. Reigns has retained the Universal Championship, but the match doesn't end there. He knows there's another fall. And to avoid being pinned, McIntyre instinctually rolls to the outside. Reigns quickly picks up the Usos and directs them to take out McIntyre for good. And they oblige. And as they're taking him out as well, we see Paul Heyman run out. He's trying to get Roman Reigns' attention to warn him that Cross is still lurking. But he gets cut off by the ominous Scarlet, who stops Heyman in his tracks. And she says those infamous words. The end is here. And Reigns, wondering what's going on, has lost sight of the fact that Cross is still in this and he's standing right behind him. Tick tock. It's time for Cross to fulfill his destiny. Cross has Roman where he wants him. He knows he needs more. He sets up a table. He loads up Reigns and he shows that Doomsday has truly arrived. He lights the table on fire. The depths of hell have opened up for Reigns and Cross hits a giant Doomsday Saito. Cross knows that he can't waste this chance. He locks in the Cross jacket. Roman is fading. The crowd is on their feet. Roman passes out. He doesn't tap and Cross has done it. He's the first person to put Roman out in over two years. The sands of time have run out. Doomsday is here. And if you like this scenario, you'd love this one too.